I know it's not popular among creative professionals, but I really like the GIMP UI. I was never really much of a Photoshop user. I really only used it maybe a little bit back in high school, six or so years ago, I reckon, something like that. And since then, I didn't really edit that many pictures until I started doing stuff on YouTube where I started using GIMP and basically I just got used to how it works. But not everyone agrees with me. Some people do want a different UI. And I saw this post over on Reddit where there's some Photoshop elements in here and there's a hamburger menu here for some reason. I don't know why, but it's a very, very different way to work with GIMP. And while I don't like this UI myself, it did remind me of something. What it reminded me of was Photo GIMP. What you're seeing right now is the stable version of GIMP. It's not like you're seeing a fork or anything like that. This is the version of GIMP I downloaded from the Arch standard repos. But the reason why it looks like Photoshop is because I'm using a custom theme along with some custom plugins to add some extra features and some custom hotkeys to make the hotkeys feel a bit more like they do in Photoshop. So because of this, it's not like you're going to have a version of GIMP that lags behind the main branch or anything like that. There might be some minor UI changes that happen between updates as GIMP updates, but the update cycle on GIMP is fairly slow anyway. Now do keep in mind at the end of the day, this is still GIMP. So there's going to be plenty of things that don't work exactly the same way they would inside of Photoshop. Just a basic thing like, for example, if we want to go and shift click and select both these layers, you just can't do that. That's just something that is not supported inside of GIMP for some reason. It should be there. But something you will get is the Photoshop style of tool placement. So rather than having a box that looks something like so, instead it's going to go all the way down your screen. And I actually find this a little bit easier to navigate. I find that when it's a box like this, I tend to forget where tools are actually placed. But having them one by one makes it a bit easier for me to see. And also things like, say, your macros will also be changed as well. So rather than having the... M key to grab the move tool, it's now going to be on V. And doing things like, say, the rectangle tool, rather than that being on R, that is now going to be on M. It's not just those macros. Every single tool that exists inside of Photoshop that has an equivalent inside of GIMP has had its macro copied over. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of things that Photoshop can do that GIMP can't. So in those cases, you have to skip over those and vice versa. In the case of things that don't exist inside of Photoshop, I believe all of those hotkeys have been left as they are as default. Now, interestingly, this comes with a bunch of pre-installed third-party plugins and filters to fill in the gaps where GIMP is missing features that otherwise would be existing inside of Photoshop. And it also comes with an absolute ton of pre-installed fonts. It actually comes with 1,800 extra fonts. Now, if I needed a specific font for a specific project, I would go and download that font I need. But if you're just doing random image editing and you want extra fonts to try out, this actually can be quite useful to have. So let's go and pick, I don't know, uh, Ponderosa. Sure, why not? And if we go and type with that one, it looks something like this. Personally, I don't think it's that bad of a font, actually. I don't really have a use for it, but I guess it could be useful for something. And it also comes with a new icon and a new splash screen. I don't really care about a custom splash screen. I'd see it for like a second and a half, and I don't actually have the new icon installed. So in my case, you're just seeing the GIMP icon. Now I've gone back to the base version of GIMP, so let's go and get Photo GIMP installed. Luckily, it's actually really easy to do. Basically, it's just drag and drop. So let's go over to the GitHub, and while we could go and download the latest version from the master branch, what I'm going to do instead is go and download the latest stable release. So if we go and download the source code right here as a zip file, you could go and download it as a targz if you want to. It's going to be the exact same data, but unzip is easier to use, and I actually remember the command to unzip something. So that's what we're going to do instead. I'll cut back to when this is actually downloaded. And it's going to stick everything inside of a folder called PhotoGimp. Now, the default setup is actually set up around the Flatpak version of GIMP. So if you're not using the Flatpak version, there is some stuff that you actually have to go and modify. So if you are using it, basically all you need to do is take these three folders right here, go and copy them into your home directory, and you'll be good to go. Everything will work. No need to mess around with anything else. If you're not using the Flatpak version, though, it's still fairly easy. So in the case of the .icons directory, go and put that into your home directory and you'll be good to go. Now, 
in the case of .local, this one is going to include the desktop file. So if you use an application launcher that looks for desktop files, Basically, it'll let you go and launch up the application like that. For this one, we'll actually have to go and modify this file right here. So go and change the name to something like, say, gimp.desktop, because we're trying to launch up GIMP in this case. And then inside of the file, we're going to change this line right here from launching up the Flatpak version of GIMP to basically just launching up the regular version of GIMP. And you're basically good to go. I guess you could go and, like, modify this comment so it's no longer in French. I guess, but comments don't really get seen, so it doesn't really matter. Then once that's done, go and copy the folder into your home directory, and you're good to go. Now, as for the .var directory, this is where all the configurations for GIMP actually exist. And when you're using the Flatpak version of GIMP versus the regular version of GIMP, the config location is actually a completely different place. So instead of taking this .var directory, what we're going to do instead is go into that folder and again and again and again until you see GIMP and GTK-2.0. These are the two folders we actually need. Now, I don't know why the user-ders.dir is here because this file is actually empty, so don't bother with that one. So what we're going to do is take those two folders, we're going to go and copy those, and then put them into the config location for our regular application. So that is going to be our .config folder. And in this case, you may be overriding stuff. So if there is anything you need to back up like your original GIMP configs, make sure that you go and do so. And once you've done that, so in my case with LF, it's actually going to go and create a copy of the folder. So I'm actually going to take this file right here, the only file that we actually need from the new folder, put it into the original folder, get rid of the original file, and rename it to make sure it has the correct name. And once you've done all of that, then you're basically good to go. So if I go and relaunch up GIMP, as we'll see, it's using the correct banner, and now it's using PhotoGIMP. Now, I think this is a really awesome project, and if you like the idea of using Photoshop-style key bindings and having a more Photoshop-style UI, I think this is a really good idea to use. But I can totally understand why there's a lot of people who really don't like PhotoGIMP. One of the disadvantages of doing this is if you are used to using Photoshop, you may start to get confused that features you'd expect to be there aren't actually inside of GIMP. In some cases, having a UI difference there is a good thing, but what this does show me is there is still a lot of places where I think the GIMP UI actually could be improved. Because while I do really like the GIMP UI, and I don't really have any interest in going full Photoshop design, there are definitely places where I think I can mess around with how things are laid out that can definitely improve my workflow. What I'm thinking is maybe I'll use something somewhere between the two UIs, but keep with the original GIMP key bindings because that's basically what I've gotten used to. And in a lot of cases, I think the GIMP key bindings actually make a lot more sense. For example, M being the move tool, which is what it probably should be. And if you want to go and do the same thing, there is a lot of documentation over on the GIMP website about how to actually customize it. I maybe do a video on this in the future, I don't really know, but I recommend checking this out and seeing what you can actually do. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please do go check out my Patreon subscribe to Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. I am well aware that my hair is like really oily today for some reason. And between every single shot, it completely changes. I don't know what's going on. I literally did nothing out of the ordinary. So I guess you're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, hopefully it's not the same tomorrow. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. And I'm out.